What happened to the M stone? <laughs> and the sub. <laughs> <laughs> you know the uh, the event. Was this? Which one was it? Oh yeah, the adventurous adventure event right now. Yep. Hands you uh, three amplifiers. They were both plus eight, and I was like, yeah, I may as well. They both failed. <laughs> hey, welcome back to another DFO video. Today, I'll be talking with an esteemed guest among the DFO community. You will learn who it is shortly, but uh, we basically talk about stuff like our DFO experiences, and we'll shift our focus towards the Blade Master class as well. Full audio was about two hours, um, so there was tons of editing done. If you want to support me in creating content like this in the future, leave a like and subscribe. But other than that, enjoy the video. So uh, first of all, tell us a bit about yourself in the uh, DFO community, uh, your Blade Master's name, and how long you've been playing DFO. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Synchronity. Uh, I went by the name Silly Kyle for a while. Um, started the game on launch in, what was that, 2009, I think? Yeah. Uh, I probably followed it since early 2008, I think. Uh, I actually found it through a friend of mine who was really hyped for it. Uh, and funnily enough, he quit the game, I think, in 60 cap <laughs> played. But um, all but one, all but two, all but two of them quit. I feel like it, uh, they joined for like the PvP aspect of the game, right? No, actually. <laughs> they joined for, like, you know, just the variety of classes and everything. Um, oh, okay. And it was a lot of fun, because back then it wasn't so much about, like, getting to end game and farming gear. It's more like just running dungeons and figuring out uh, how classes work, etc. And how dungeons work. Yeah, that's interesting. Because I had a few friends back in the day, too, who obviously quit. But um, they did... Uh, they did level all the characters to max. Yeah. But they played for like the PvP aspect of the game. Because that was basically the end game. Yeah. Way back, right? Uh-huh. So people had like bamboo bracelets and like King's, the King's title or whatever. The uh the winter title for right. attack speed. Yeah, the PvP was like end game back in the day, so there is light wing sword. Plus fifteen attack speed, holy <laughs> <laughs> You do zero damage, but you, like, OTG combos for, like, ever. You just combo forever, yeah. But, yeah, um, I think ever since 2009, um, I played Weapon Master almost, uh... I, mm, yeah, I think Weapon Master was my first class. And now you're, now you're like, probably the most well-known. I don't know, maybe well-known? Popular? Uh I, I, think that, I think that really just has to do with the fact that I set up the Weapon Master Discord leader. I'm not the strongest for sure. Not even close. I can name like probably like 10 Weapon Masters off the top of my head who are much stronger than I am. I think you are stronger than I am. You have a mythic, don't you? I do have a mythic. You sure do. You have a really good setup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have a mythic. I just realized that. Wow. I don't. This character has the most health. Out of all my other characters on this account, I have never found a single mythic. I, I've been, I've been pretty lazy lately. But up until probably like a month ago, I never missed a day of two plus two. I never missed a day of doing hells. Oh my god, dude, that's terrible! I never got a mythic. But hey, I have like eight armor sets done. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> all right. Well, next question. Um... So, like, what do you like about DFO, like, currently, and, like, what keeps you playing every day? Number one is definitely the friends, the community, etc. I definitely mm -hmm. wouldn't be playing this game, and wouldn't have been playing this game all these years without having, like, you know, a close-knit group of friends. Uh, I give them all kinds of trouble and whatnot, and, you know, they stick around. We do content together. Apart from that, I think... I was a big fan of the lore um, early oh, on. Oh, really? Yeah. You're I, one of those, eh? I was, I was a really big lore nut early on, just because there weren't a lot of like MMORPGs, or just like our online games in general, that had like 
any kind of depth of lore. There wasn't a lot of like, oh yeah, this NPC is, you know, got a backstory. And it's like, right. oh, great. You know, every game has that. And then it's like, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> this NPC isn't forgotten and is relevant in the story like two chapters later or whatever. Um, yeah. It's that kind of thing. Like a lot of other games, especially online games, kind of just like introduce a character and then they never talk about it ever again. Exactly. So I really like that. Uh, the music was also another big factor. Oh um, yeah, dude, the music is banging. Yeah, I mean, it's Sirocco music. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, there were some like weird ones. Like I didn't like Goblin Kingdom's music, even though it was fitting. <laughs> But, um, I think I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but like Rangelis' Gorilla was really good. Um, I'd say the number three thing that really, really kept me playing this game, especially to the level I did, because if you open my Explorer Club, you'll see that I every character at level 90 or above, <laughs> uh, which is not healthy by any means, and obviously this was, you know, the work of, you know, several years of gameplay. Right. Every time they had, like, a level up event, they'll be like, oh, I can play this character. But, um... Yeah, just so the... All, all those 66 characters are level 90 plus. Yes. And the huge variety of classes, huge variety of, you know, uh, ways you can play the game. Like, except Creator. I'm not a big fan of Creator, and a friend of mine is going to kill me for saying this <laughs> but i don't think it's a fun class i don't i think he knows that but it, it's an interesting class it's very niche it's very niche it's it's just not for me <laughs> yeah and like early on that blew my mind because there weren't a lot of online games that had this variety in like brevity etc right there was something about like the way they were able to balance a game around all of these classes and, you know, parties of four, parties of, you know, two, etc. Just being able to play with your friends in real time. Um, right. That was really cool. And early on, back in the day, like, combo videos were huge. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't... I don't know if they still make combo videos. I imagine not. It was uh, a very old There fashion. was a recent PvP tournament, but... Right, like, PvP tournaments are, sure, but, like, early on, back in the day, like, there were some really, really, really flashy, like, PvP combo videos. Yeah. Um, that had, like, really, I really, do remember those. really bad English, but really good editing, and good music, etc. Yeah. Like, that was hype, but... That was, yeah, that was really hype. <laughs> it, it certainly died down over the years, and obviously, uh, the worst part is that because now we're, you know, DFO Global, you can get matched up with somebody from like Australia or like Germany or like Hong Kong or anywhere. And it just wouldn't be a fun experience for you or the other person. Is there any content that KDNF has right now or like any patch that you are excited for to get in the future? Yes. Um, I am highly anticipating the new Talisman dungeon. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but there's definitely a boss that just looks like Batman. <laughs> uh, that you can't tell me that's not what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that looks really good. Uh, the new talisman skills look great. Having a third talisman slot changes a lot of things. It does. just the way how some classes even just feel, especially with like how some classes are like. God, I really, really wish I had a third slot right now because I really like this skill, but I just don't have the slots. We've we've basically caught up to most of what KDNF has. I will say that I always look forward to what class gets a third awakening next, and I was so surprised and upset about Thieves getting a third awakening instead of female gunners. So, yeah, that was a weird one. <laughs> yeah, but... They looked really good. So but Necromancer, okay. though. <laughs> Necromancer's great. Shadow Dancer's really good. Rogue's really cool. Kunoichi's okay. Yeah. She's right. I do know that uh, Ozma Raid is supposedly around the corner. Uh, which raid, sir? Um, Ozma? Oh, really? It's not Kane? Supposedly. Uh, not Kane. 
I mean, it could be. Maybe they'll pull a fast one on us, but we'll we'll surely find soon enough, either at the Winter Festival or sooner. Right. Um, I actually saw a streamer who had like seven weapons mm-hmm. that all had sort of cool, not sort of seven weapons, but he had enough materials to make seven upgraded weapons. It's like, excuse me? Yeah. Is that common? It's actually uh, the pot that you buy from the raid shop. It uh, it's weighted towards the weapon material, actually. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't even know they were in the pot. I thought it was only Sirocco Epics. Yeah, like, so, whatever. like, if you check the raid shop now, I think they do have it. Yeah, they have the immaterial essence, and then the three Sirocco uh, gear. Things. Oh, yeah, you're right. So it is actually weighted towards the weapons, or, or what I've heard. So, that's why there's, like, it's, like, super RNG. Um, because you actually just might get all weapons instead of, like, the actual Sirocco pieces you need. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it, it's terrible. Hey, it's great for me, for Weapon Master. I'm gonna need those. Yeah. <laughs> Blade Masters, man. We need four weapons. Well, uh, I'm gonna give you lead here. And, um, yeah, I was just wondering what your 25 second rotation looks like on your Blade Master. And see if Ooh. that like differs right. from mine or what I had in mind. I do have Kazan. Uh, I have Charge Burst at level four. Okay. Yeah. See, that's interesting to me because I don't ever use Charge Burst. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, I I think it's a nice filler skill. You can use it twice in twenty five seconds too. I should level it more, mm. but. Did get a single seven for my awakenings, so that was unfortunate. In the future, once we get the uh, the three talismans, um, you can do like three cooldown runes on uh, sword or mind sword, right? You can already do that now. It's just uh, I don't. <laughs> I-, I tried it. It's, I tried it, but like it's super tight. Yeah, you have to you have to precast it. Yeah, I just realized that. Uh, Interesting. Okay. I can cheese my sandbags later. Um, <laughs> you. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of like optimal rotations, um, in the future, do you think like skills like you use like charge burst or something like shooting star, do you think it could make a return? Or I have, like actually... I have in fact seen a build that uses shooting star, which I think is absolutely hilarious, first of all. Really, he had the uh, the talisman for it, okay. Uh, which does speed it up, I think. Yeah, <laughs> um, I have seen a build for it, and it did a lot of damage. Uh, that said, it is very gimmicky, and you do lose a lot of damage elsewhere, so it's not really worth it. Um, a really cool change would be like, yeah, if you got rid of all the falling swords and just like it's like just one meteor shot, you know, like kind of like uh, dragoons. Yeah, exactly. I, I wish it was, like, one of those things where if you use, like, flowing stance and then used shooting star. I've always said this, and if, if maybe the talisman allowed it, but or just the skill itself, if it allowed you to use flowing stance into shooting star and it would just do the thing, like, in front of you and the swords would just drop in an area. Oh, dude, that'd be sick. Without you, like, <laughs> flying to the sky, that'd be great. And, like, hey, if you need iframes, you can still do it the normal way. Personally, for me, and I know other people struggle with this, too, um, is frame rate lag with Raging Dragon Slash? Oh, yeah. If there are multiple enemies? Oh, no, dude, that's gonna explode my computer. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I God! <laughs> 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 yeah. This was really funny when I did a quadruple Weapon Master party for uh, Fiend War. Yeah. And we all had this talisman, and we were like, hey, Let's all use Raging Dragon Slash at Rosen. <laughs> it's only one enemy. What's the worst that could happen? Three people DC'd. <laughs> <laughs> Just instantly yeah. crash their games. Uh, 
a lot of people aren't aware, um, but Lunar Sword Dance's damage, um, a lot of it gets put into hypervigilance, I'm sure you know. Mm-hmm. But I've done some tests, and if you add them up, even without the Talisman for Lunar Sword Dance, it is almost always my strongest skill. Even stronger than Blade Dance, Lightning. Interesting. Um, Breaking Dragon Slash, if you use it twice, um, can be stronger, or is about as strong. Mm. But I think a lot of people have been sleeping on ISD, because uh, they just look at the chart, it's like, oh, ISD is you know number 11, number 12, number 7, or something like that. They didn't do that much damage. Right. But they don't look at the hypervigilance damage, because you can't really like um, split it up to see how much Breaking Dragon Slash did with hypervigilance. Mm. That's easy to kind of Shrink it off. Yeah, I think ISD was my first talisman, but then I killed it for Raging Slash Dragon. I, I still have mine, and I should use it more often. I will say the ninety percent damage reduction is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it is. I lived from Sarpo- one of Sarpo's gimmicks. You know the one where he um, fires a bunch of balls in a cone. Yep. Uh, I had like 20% HP and I was up against the wall and I couldn't get out so I just <laughs> I just used IST and I lived with like like 12% I'm like oh I take like nothing <laughs> dude that's actually a big brain <laughs> I'm like I'm su- I'm surprised I paid off ISD becomes your panic button yeah kinda <laughs> <laughs> uh so last question I guess um do you have any final words or any tips or tricks for new aspiring blade masters? Ooh. So, ooh, I should probably open up my inventory here. So, I know that obviously the two weapons everyone wants to use is lightsaber and, and uh, zombato, or, yeah, generally. Uh, how do I get rid of these? Um, but there haven't been a lot of players using the other open types, specifically Bludgeon. Uh, Bludgeon used to be popular way back when, but you know nowadays it's kind of fallen off. Yeah, most people only use it for the whole you know ISD canceling. Oh yeah, which is still possible. It's still doable, but there's really no point. Um, right. Katana had a fair bit of uh, limelight, I suppose. Uh, it did have the strongest 20 second rotation back in the day because of the whole uh, bleed mechanic. Right. But Short Sword kind of never really got any limelight until like the very, very end when it, it quote unquote technically had the strongest 20 second rotation by using Charge Crash, which is really weird. <laughs> I never actually. Back in seventy cap. I actually never saw. No, no, no. This was a. Uh, recently. Yeah, this was not recent, but ninety five cap at the end of ninety five cap. Uh, short sword actually technically had the strongest seventy second rotation. Or not, charge not, crash. I'm sorry, not seventy. Twenty second. Uh, using I think four charge crashes. Dude, that's insane. What? Which is really interesting. I. I never actually saw anyone use it. I've actually never seen. Any videos of people using it in like prey raid or anything like that, but mm-hmm. I have seen like like twenty second tests of showcasing the rotation. It's like that's that's weird. <laughs> but anyway, my point is, um, I think it really is something I want to see more. I want to see a lot of weapon masters just you know utilizing more weapon types or a weapon type that just maybe isn't very popular. And a very good reason for this is that. Uh, we are now in a burst meta again in Soroka Raid. So mm-hmm. having a lightsaber is actually not super necessary anymore. Um, it's nice to have, of course, for the you know lower cooldowns and higher DPS, etc. And just being able to kind of you know spam skills through our dungeon. Right. But there really isn't anything stopping people from using other weapons, especially since uh, Pandemonium Flame, which I disassemble now but and uh taiji emperor's sword and even anger vadil they're all very strong weapons mm-hmm. um 
obviously the downside is that you have to reinforce several weapons or, you know, a weapon that might not be quote unquote popular. I'm sure you'll get like people que like questioning you like, why do you, why are you using short sword or why are you using a bludgeon? But right. Uh, I've unfortunately seen a lot of people like, oh yeah, I really enjoy bludgeon weapon master. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people are like, that's not good. You should use lightsaber and zombato. And I mm -hmm. don't think that's really a healthy way to kind of portray the class. I don't think there's like, or should be a one correct method to play any class in this game. With a couple exceptions, naturally. 100% agree. Um, I think seeing more weapon types is uh, something I want to see more from new players. Yeah, that, that's solid. Solid advice. As far as tips and tricks, um, it's really just uh, utilizing flowing stance cancels. That's really the only like advanced technique, I would say. For example, if you're running away from an enemy or like a gimmick, you can triple slash away, sure. But let's say you need to change axes, you know, in the middle of that, you can do cancel and walk up. And that's something I don't think is wholly necessary, but it can definitely save you. Mm -hmm. um, there's also like mountain wheel iframes. That's very gimmicky. You should never rely on that. Yeah. Um, Guard is something I don't see used very often now. Um, I do have it maxed. You can mitigate a lot of damage, and this does come down to just knowledge and experimenting. But there are a lot of attacks that can be just completely guarded. Right. And obviously you're not going to take zero damage from anything, but you can definitely survive some attacks with just holding guard down for a couple seconds if you're in a, you know... A sticky situation. Okay, definitely. Uh, and there's some things you can completely cheese. Another one might be uh, the whole. I mentioned this before, but lightning draw sword canceling into draw sword. You can otherwise you kind of have to wait. And that's really it. Um, there used to be more tricks like that, but they kind of normalize everything. Uh, like for example, two A is just faster now. Yeah, before you have to you had to cancel it, but not anymore. I still have a habit of doing that. <laughs> I still do it all the time. Yeah, I totally feel you. Yeah, I totally feel you. Um, apart from that, um, it's just practicing your flowing stances, knowing when to use them. Uh, a lot of people I see always try to chain these two together: stance, swift, and rise. Mm -hmm. Not necessary. If you don't think it's safe, just do a swift and then just get out. Right. And the biggest tip I'd say is utilizing iframes. Um, you don't really have that many anymore. And of course, the biggest one is flash cut. It's very long. And because it travels you, or not tra travels, it t because it takes you from one side to the other through an enemy like this, you can very, very easily just kind of like hold on to it just in case a boss might, you know start firing projectiles in your direction and you mm -hmm. want to get out of that corner. Yeah, that's solid. Just uh, just a few things I want to add on because we're talking about iframes and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if you do do a uh, flowing stance and you just do this, it gives you super armor. Yep. So and it if you're ever in a sticky situation, like uh, Ezra explosions or something like that, you can just whoosh, tank yep. it. And, and that super armor will stick for your entire next flowing stance skill. Yep. So great uh, panic skill. Yep. Especially well since you can swift out of the way. Yep. And the uh, the most obvious obvious one is uh, shooting star. Ah uh, yes. For days. Uh, there are, however, some things where, uh, especially in Soroka raid, it'll completely ignore shooting star. I found that. Shooting Star technically might not be an iframe so much as it is uh, you just being very far away. But uh, yeah, sounds good. Do you have any uh, questions or final comments? If you enjoy any class in this game, I think you should stick with it. Uh, despite anyone telling you, oh, the class is bad or, you know, it's not playable or you need to do this to do well. Uh, but I think that it's very unfortunate to see people 
just kind of drop the characters or drop the game because of stuff like that. So if you truly like a class or like the design, the way it's played, or just, you know, the way it looks, or maybe you just really like avatars for that, you're, for that one character that you have, do it. Play it. Don't have to listen to what other people say about it or say about you. Um, if you truly like the class, you're going to want to get better at it. If you really, 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 you know, put in the effort, you can make anything work in this game, basically. Right. 100%. Agreed. Within reason. I don't want to see, like, you know... <laughs> I don't want to see builds with, like, oh, yeah, no draw sword, ISD, or flash cut. It's only, you know... Only... Dodge shooting stars. Look what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only charge crash and shooting star. And wave your slasher. I don't want to see that, but, you know. But, yeah, hey, thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, it was lots of fun. I learned a new, learned a lot of new things. But um, yeah, if you guys ever want to join Silly Cow's Weapon Master server, link in the description below. Remember to like and subscribe. And uh, until next time.